Welcome back to This Truck in Life, where we go deeper into the life of a truck driver, an owner operator, or a carrier to understand their journey, what motivated them towards their career, and what advice they might have for others in the industry. I'm Ashley, and today Aaron and I are joined by Wayne Craig, also known as Trucker Wayne. You can find him on LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, and now TikTok. We're so excited to have you here today. This Truck and Life is brought to you by FreightWeb, a company focused on building the best carrier optimization suite software for carriers and owner operators of any size to help them run a profitable and efficient business. To learn more, check out our website at myfreightweb.com backslash carriers. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of This Truck and Life. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to This Truck and Life. Today, we have Wayne Craig with us. He is currently an owner operator with Dart Network. And he also works very closely with St. Christopher's Trucker Relief Fund. Um, so let's go ahead and give a warm welcome to Wayne and, and let's hear let's hear a little bit about himself. Woohoo, yeah, yeah, Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so very much. For effects, yeah, so uh, some shouts and some class will have to do for now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I've been uh, driving for almost uh, eight months and uh, I started I started the trucker Wayne with uh, uh, driver solutions right when I started uh, even before I got into the truck and uh, we've been basically blogging ever since. I've worked with Driver Solutions for about six years. I've done over 200 videos on YouTube, on Driver Solutions YouTube page. And uh, we basically followed me all the way from a student to a training uh, person, and then the second trainer, and then on the solo. And uh, we took a small little break in between there and then hopped back into it. I've been solo now. I kind of broke off on my own for about a little over a year now. But uh, we basically followed my journey online and it's still all out there from from training all the way to almost eight years now wow so how many total years have you been driving all the way from training yeah, it'll, be, it'll be it'll be eight years, eight years? training and everything in september wow eight years okay cool man you've been definitely getting a lot of attention with your vlogs you know it's 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 crazy i love to watch them because not only are they entertaining but they are uh very informational you know you 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 uh you for example like the a mandatory hour workout for the drivers you know you definitely take you know that seriously and and definitely to get your walk in I, I, you know i'm right there with you watching your walks you know <laughs> so hey, uh, it's 59 minutes yeah i say you, you know you're about ready to head back to the truck now <laughs> but you know it's, uh, it's definitely pretty well, cool I, I, appreciate, I appreciate that aaron because uh what you're seeing now what you're seeing now is especially with the videos of when i first did my first video uh, it'll be four years ago, October in Chicago, I was doing intermodal for JB hunt and I was taking my breaks in Chicago and it took me 52 takes four years ago. 52 oh, wow. for one. That's awesome. So you're seeing a lot of hard work involved. What you see now, there's a lot of, uh, me trying to perfect my craft with the video. So, uh, I'm kind of happy. I, I don't have to... Did the vlogs just start with Truck driving, did you start vlogging when you started driving or did you vlog before you even got into the industry also? No, I never did a vlog. And uh, Derek McClain, the guy who I, I worked with for six years hand in hand uh, with Driver Solutions, him and I were partners on the original Trucker Wayne page, which is still out there. Mm -hmm. And he said vlogging four years ago, he said vlogging is the way to go. You got to learn how to do it. Hence Chicago. And I was, I was off of work. I was on my reset. I was in front of the ESPN station. And he finally, after about, 40 takes that Wayne, you got to go have a beer or something because right now they suck <laughs> yeah. so no, I, did, I i got better but yeah it's uh it's definitely a challenge with the videos because there's a lot of information you got to come across people want to watch it and uh you got to have informational you have to you know do a couple different things than when i was just writing alone mm -hmm. nice nice now um i've been also watching the you know the whole uh, video series with uh, you and you know Dart was it um what's his name Mr. Uh, Abel C CEO Mr. and the president Mr. of Dart correct, correct. and uh, you know one of the things that kind of caught my eye and attention was the part where you guys go into the, the trucker lounge and you get really excited because I mean it, you know it's super clean you got couches up in there you got a full kitchen you got showers now, how important is that for truck drivers out there to have those types of amenities, super clean, super spacious, um, you know, readily available, you're not waiting. And I mean, how important is that to you? 
and drivers I, out there in general. I, for me, I, I love it. Um, it's very important for me, especially when you walk in and it is clean. Uh, even I think people would tell you now to, to be looking at the overall thing, uh, less and less drivers are going into these lounges. So if they're really nice, you, you especially if it's a yard like dark, you'd be more tempted to go in when it's really nice. Uh, the full kitchen, the couches and everything else, because especially since COVID has happened. But now that things are starting to open up, something like that's super important because a lot of people cook right in their truck and they can actually go inside there and cook. Mm -hmm. Uh, being clean is huge. Um, I won't name the company, but one of the yards, I actually cleaned it myself. Um, I was there five weeks or five days a week, and whoever was doing it, that was my housekeeping management, but I just cleaned it myself for everybody else that went through there when I was going through there. It means so much to have something that nice and that clean uh, where people just, it's just welcoming, really. I mean, it's just saying they love us, as, you know, as much as we want to get out there and make money, but they're saying, Hey, great job, truckers. Come on in and enjoy the amenities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's super awesome. And appreciation is definitely being showed in a certain way that, you know, it's, it's a direct effect to the drivers. Um, and because yes. to have something, something clean and somewhere cool and a place to sit that's clean and you got showers, that's, that actually speaks a lot. Mm -hmm. It does. It does. Absolutely. And uh, I think anyone that would tell you, we all, we all talk and we know uh, the companies that out there that, that have the nice yards and, and have the nice amenities like that. So it matters to everyone, even though more people are spending time in their truck during uh, COVID-19, uh, we still have to go and we still have to take those showers. So it's a big deal. Yeah. Now, how did you get into the trucking industry? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> a lot of people ask that. A lot of, I, I don't talk much about my prior hus, um, hospitality management career. I was a director of housekeeping operations. Uh, for about seven years, I did that. And uh, I had a little bit of, I'm very honest about this. I have a photography page. I'm a professional photographer. I've sold like 200 photos worldwide. Wayne Craig Photography and Adventures, C-R-A-G-G and Adventures. And uh, yeah, so I was um, doing the hospitality thing, going to really cool places, taking photos and stuff like that. Well, I had had a little bit of a falling out with my last um, resort that I worked at with the boss right in front of me. And, and I'm very honest about this and, and I've talked about it on my photography page, but if you've ever heard when you say, take that job and shove it, I literally said, take this job and shove it. And I knew I was not going to probably be working in that industry anymore. <laughs> so um, I have bet one of my best friends in the Navy uh, was doing was working at the C1. It was a director of the C1 training that worked with Driver Solutions. They're all owned by Driver Solutions. I gave him a call and he said, Wayne, with your photography, you have to get into trucking. Um, it would be great for your photography. You'd make a lot of money and you can manage people. You can certainly manage yourself. And eight years later, here I am having a great time. Wow. Now, do you snap a lot of cool pictures while you're on the road? Because I do see, I do see your your flower picture Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the all of them flat, the ones you're seeing are actually just on breaks a lot of times. Yeah. The trucking industry has paid for all of my trips five times to Alaska. The trucking industry paid for that. Nice. Uh, when I was flat bedding, I did the 48 in Canada, including the Canadian Rockies in the winter time. So you can imagine the opportunities that I had. Like at one point. Uh, I was flat bedding into um, about the middle of the, uh, uh, just north, or I should say just east of the Rockies. And I was coming back down through Montana with no, uh, with no load on there. And anybody that knows there are certain entry points that come from Canada into Montana. If you're not loaded, you can go through there. I ended up right on the edge of uh, Glacier National Park in Montana. And I took a 34 hour reset and took some of the best photos I've ever taken on a 34 hour reset. So uh, Glacier wow. National Park. So it's, it's, it did exactly what my friend told me it would do. And uh, I've had a great time. I've had a, I've had a really enjoyed it. Cool. Now I see that, that uh, USS Carl Vinson hat. So you were in the Navy for a, a while or? Hey, long? That's where I met. That's where I met my friend, Rich. Uh, uh, he works at Transport America now, Rich Campbell. And uh, yeah, we, we both met on the USS Carl Vinson aircraft carrier. And uh, I was in there during uh, 1989 to 1993. So during the first Persian Gulf War, but very important, not, not in theater. Our ship was the last one over there before he invaded Kuwait. We came back, and so I never made it over there. I just served during that time. 
Wow, that's incredible. Thank you for your service, by the way. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I was that close to staying in, too. Four years I got out. I would never be trucking, I don't think. <laughs> right. You well, got to have some crazy stories from then. Oh, you got to share oh, one. <laughs> this could go two hours on there. <laughs> I can't tell you crazy stories. I will say, I will say in 92, uh, I had a friend that lived in Flint where I grew up, in Flint, Michigan. And he came out. I, I, uh, you get 30 days leave, and I was uh, – all my leave, I was uh, actually acquiring it. And he went from – Flint to Seattle, picked me up in Bremerton, Washington, and we drove up the Alaskan Highway on the 50th anniversary of the highway, wow. and then came back down, and uh, he ended up putting like 10,000 miles on his truck, and uh, we were, our ship was in dry dock at the time, we came back from, we came back from the Middle East, and uh, our ship was in dry dock, so there, there are, now that probably not the story, the crazy story you wanted to hear, I've got some of them, but that would take about two hours. <laughs> 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 now uh you had mentioned that um you know you 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 took some uh some photos uh at the what was it in montana right right the glacier national uh, park what's some of the most wow places that you you've driven through and actually maybe even took advantage of the time to take some photos was it was it montana? Was one of them. yeah that was one of them uh probably my favorite though uh, when we always did it we were uh they called it irregular routing. I was on a 48 um, foot flatbed and they did irregular. They get you off the interstate a lot of times. Idaho, I went through some spaces in Idaho going from 84 up to 90. Yeah. I mean, breathtaking, just breathtaking. Uh, Utah, Utah is probably, probably number one. I did a reset in Moab on the off season. They let me park my truck right on the side. And if you know, in the summertime, you can never do that. Um, during the height of it, but I parked on the side and the cop came around. I asked him if I could park in Moab and he said, yes, but it, he told me in the, in the, in the busy time, I'd get a ticket, you know, and get, they'd get me out of there and haul me out. So I spent 34 hour reset, actually 44 hours in Moab in Utah and that whole stretch um, in Utah and New Mexico there. It, it's just breathtaking. A lot of people don't get a chance to see that when you just stick to the highways. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. You can count me in that bracket. I I haven't been to Utah. Uh, I've probably been there, but I might have traveled there through night. Uh, but you know, I, Utah is one of the places that every person in our podcast has mentioned. Yep. Utah is one of the most beautiful places they've driven through. Yep. It, it is. It's it's incredible. And then you start doing the off routing, like even on the interstate. But if you get off route like that, irregular routing, it's just it's pretty incredible. Yeah. Wow. So where, now, where are you located right now, if you don't mind me asking? Where are you at? Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I've, I've delivered there more than a few times, and every time it was hot. <laughs> it is hot yeah. right now. It's, a, it's 102 degrees right now. Feels I, got my windows, I got my windows open in Wisconsin, and it's uh, 76. A little bit of a difference. <laughs> Goodness gracious. That's swe sweater weather. <laughs> oh, it's great. Long sleeve shirt right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now I heard you uh, mention a flatbed and I know I didn't see a flatbed behind your dart truck in those videos. So you, you, you handle both a lot of, a lot of carrier, a lot of drivers out there, owner operators, um, you know, they'll stick to dry van and just stick with it. They won't, they won't venture and do a flatbed. Um, now in your honest opinion, uh, what do you like better handling flatbeds or dry vans or have you handled reefers as well? I've done, Okay, for my that's what's been interesting about my career. I've I have been guilty of going and trying different things, you know, and moving around like a lot of truckers do. I have an eight year. I just passed a surprise level two inspection with the CEO sitting to my <laughs> yeah. side over there. I don't know if you saw that one, but uh, with the clean record, I can basically you know go wherever I want. Eight years, you know, clean record, no tickets or anything like that. So I've actually moved around to get more experience for my blog. So. Um, I've done, uh, I've done intermodal with JB Hunt in Chicago. I worked in Chicago downtown. Now I say downtown, but the surrounding intermodals for a year, I've got 300,000 flatbed miles on there. That was probably, except for the tarping part of it. I was getting a little too old for the tarping part of it. That alone in, in, in getting me to all the 48 and then into Canada was probably the most fun I had, but I, I, I seriously just didn't want to tarp anymore. Um, it, it's hard very hard. Now they have curtain vans and stuff, but that didn't present itself until uh, a little bit later. And I was back to, uh, back to dry van. So dry van 
if I'm just going to stick in an area, for example, I just came off before the coronavirus hit, I had like the most easy GM dedicated lane ever, uh, low miles, a ton of money, same route, but it's boring. It's boring. It's boring. It's, but, but not getting paid is great. <laughs> you, get, you know, you're doing the same route. You're not going out west. So yeah. for the overall experience for truck driving, for me and my photos, I could never say anything bad ever about flatbed except for the tarping side of it because most of those 200 photos I've sold was photos that I took while I was flatbedding. Now, would you say besides the tarping that flatbedding is more higher maintenance than dry van? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially yeah, yeah, when it, it comes, are there are a lot, of, lot more hidden charges with flatbeds than there are with dry vans? You know, I, I didn't do the owner-op. I got into owner-op, it'll be two oh. years ago in September, sorry. Fly just flew in because I have my windows down at 72. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, but uh, the hidden fees and stuff like that, I was a company driver all the time. So I, I wouldn't know that. But I, but I do know um, it, it has its own challenges, um, mm -hmm. flatbed does. You have to think a lot more. I had a 48 foot, uh, I, my axles were not spread. You know, they were together. I couldn't move my tandems. I had to do math for 48,000 pounds. I had to know my center point. I had to work with the high load driver. Way more intense, but I like that. It keeps you thinking. It keeps you, you know, you make, you know, a lot of times I'll never see the high load driver when I'm driving. You know, you'll yeah. never see them. You'll see the shipping, but you work hand in hand with the high load guys because they know, you know, your trailer. They know what they're doing. Way more hands on. So, yes, absolutely. I, I miss the, the flatbed part of it, but there, it is way more involved. I mean, a lot of times in dry van, especially since COVID, yeah, I, I've had people load me up. I call on a phone. They tell me to back in. I get loaded up. They leave the bills in the back, and I'm off. I don't talk to anybody. <laughs> wow. Nothing. Yeah. So you so when they load you up, they just leave the bills in the back, and then you just pull up, not, and then you just grab it when you close the doors. Yeah, not all of them now, but that when the height of COVID happened, that's yeah. exactly how they did it. So I pulled in. There was an intercom. I, I just punched on it they said i'll go into door 12 they will leave the bills for you you sign them and they and they put a uh, mailbox in there wow. and you sign your bills so basically i never came in contact with anyone during the height during the height of covid that seems to be changing now things seem to be getting way more back to you know you go into the shipping office with your mask and like all the walmarts are checking the temperature and stuff like that i've had my mm -hmm. temperature checked like four times in the last four days going into a shipper or receiver. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've, I've been hearing about, you know, the COVID numbers going down and things starting to get back to normal. And then I hear yesterday night and this morning, Arizona is like <laughs> the highest. It's like getting higher than, than New York numbers already. I, I, I read that. Oh, I, wow. I mean, yeah, I, I, I try um, pretty hard to not get into any of the politicking thing into it because being eight years, um, as you know, truck drivers have been known to get a little bit um, angry at times. And yeah. uh, I, I can tell you, though, I saw those numbers and I thought, oh, boy, because I went into New Orleans twice during the height of New Orleans. I went into Chicago. They tell me to go there. I go there. I've delivered to every major city except for New York. I, I want nothing to do with me. That's my choice. <laughs> but, yeah, I heard Arizona's getting hot again, you know, for the COVID. That's not good. No, uh, no it's not. Luckily, we're, uh, you know, working from home, so we're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stay safe. Yeah. yeah. No kidding. Now, um, in, your, in your vlogs, um, uh, Wayne, I, I noticed that you have mentioned a few times about the St. Uh, Christopher Fund. Uh, yes. You want to talk about that a little bit? Explain to us what that's all about? Yeah, th thanks for asking. Um, it's the St. Christopher Truckers Relief Fund. They've been around for, for a long time. Uh, when I started this last thing I, with Mr. Abel sitting next to me, uh, I actually worked with uh, GoFundMe. And they, we set up together, we set up this uh, fund for, um, now they've been around forever, so I'm not the only one. Pilots given to them, uh, some, some major donations, you know. So they, they've been around for a while. The great thing about the uh, St. Christopher Truckers Relief Fund is they help sick and injured truck drivers. But even more important, the truckers never see the money. They're never handed over cash. Um, if, if they're approved and they have to go through approval process, uh, they send their bills into St. Christopher. St. Christopher will pay that bill 
why they're why they're laid up for wh whatever reason, mm -hmm. and then they answered to the board. So I know some companies have been way more than willing to give to this fund in particular because it, they're very particular. They have to answer to a board to every penny. I've interviewed Sh uh, Shannon to uh, when she talks about. Uh, the the trucker relief fund. And I interviewed her, and she that's one of the first things that she mentions, because she wants people to know that if you're going to give money, that it's very safe, that it's going to go to to what you would think it would go to. Mm -hmm. That's sick and injured truck drivers, but more most importantly, that the truck drivers are not just handing cash out. That's They're cool. saying, give us a house bill, give us the insurance for the car, and then they end up paying stuff for for that. I thought it was great. Uh, I thought it was, I, I did a lot of research on it and I was like, oh, this is the one I want to stick with. And I still am, even though the tour is over, you'll see on my videos, I still put it out there. That's yeah. great. Do you know how many um, truck drivers the fund has helped? Uh, I don't know a total. I don't know a total. It's been quite a bit. There is a, I want to talk about that a little bit because I got a strange message uh, the other day. I wanted to talk about St. Christopher Truckers Relief Fund. And I was a little disappointed because you, you may only see one or two people in the video, right? Mm -hmm. And when I, inter when I interviewed Shannon, this is super important. Do you think if a truck driver gets sick or injured that they ultimately just want to end up on a video? You know, oh, look at me over here. I'm sick. It's a right. big deal. It's a big deal to get these truck drivers to say, okay, because they have to talk about their story. Mm -hmm. and a lot of them are sick. A lot of them just came off an injury. They don't want to be like me when I'm holding my camera up and I say, look at me over here, truck away. <laughs> right. And uh, I was a little bit disappointed when I got that message because it, it just, it didn't reflect what was really going on. Yes. You may see only the one or two or three people. Like when you open up the link that I sent you, those people have agreed to put their life out there in public. And mm -hmm. not a lot of people are willing to do that after they get sick or injured. So they've helped right. thousands of people but you may only see one, two, three, four, or five people, but that's because they, they ask every person, would you like to, you know, would you like right. to tell your story? And the majority of them say, no, but thank you for helping. <laughs> right, right. So, and you were saying that you set up a GoFundMe. Is that still active? Yes. In fact, if you, uh, I, every, everything, everything that I uh, put on my LinkedIn page at Wayne Craig, C-R-A-G-G, and I've changed my, it's Trucker Wayne dash, Wayne Craig, C-R-A-G-G, -G. my old trucker, Wayne, if you just put trucker Wayne in there, my old page will pop up, which is great. We have great videos, but the, but the active one, uh, I've actually put the link in there and you can click on the link and it's got a picture of Dart and uh, we are up, we are up to, we just made $2,000 this week. So yes, that today. is, yes, wow. today. That's great. That's good. Yeah. And you know, we'll actually um, include the link in the description for this video. So that way, if anybody who's watching wants to donate, they are more than welcome to. Um, and, you know, we appreciate and we really, you know, support these kinds of um, these kinds of initiatives that companies are taking and people are taking. And we have been looking for ways. How can we give back to the trucking community? How can we give back to the drivers? And, you know, uh, this came across and we felt it was perfect and we are going to make two donations over the next two months. And, um, wow. you know, we're looking wow. forward to, we're looking forward to seeing what, what this relief fund does and how it really helps people, um, you know, who are, who are sick and injured. Yeah. Well, I can't thank you enough for that. <laughs> I gave you the clap, the golf clap. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Ashley. We truly appreciate that. And inside, when, when you click on the link, we actually were able to, to embed some of the testimonials Good. from some of the people there too. So you'll be able to take a look at that very professionally done. Like I said, GoFundMe in San Diego, we wanted this to be top notch. Uh, their, their GoFundMe charity uh, helped me out in their team about how we can raise the most amount of money. So it's been a struggle. I just let you know, I tried it on my own separate and only raised $125 when I did it alone. Right. Now that we had, now that we did it during our tour, the, the Dave Abel's fifth wheel uh, tour, fact finding tour, you know, we're up to 2000 and thank you so much for giving uh, because it's a, it's a big deal and it'll just keep incrementally going up. So uh, it's a big deal. And thanks. Yes, of course. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Now, um, I want to talk about a little bit about your uh, your co-pilot uh, with Mr. Abels. Uh, by the way, Mr. Abels, if, if you're watching, 
Um, I, I honestly think that you are uh, a true leader and, you know, a role model for all business owners out there. What you did going co-piloting with, uh, you know, Trucker Wayne, that's awesome. You got to see in, in you know, in firsthand on, you know, what the driver's life is all about and what they get, what they have to experience on the road and, and at the locations that they go to to pick up and or deliver. Um, so I think that's awesome. Keep, keep up the good work. Now, uh, Trucker Wayne. What did you feel about having a co-pilot like Mr. Abel's with you on the road? Uh, now, over the course of eight years, were you used? You were used to just being by yourself solo, right? Uh, you know, you must have read. You must have been in this truck. When he hopped in that truck, when he when he hopped in that truck, I haven't had anybody, no one, sit next to me since I left. Um, in November, I we were we were uh, they, we did incremental training. The first part of the training, someone just just sat next to me. And, and didn't drive at all. The second part of the training was actual team driving. And uh -huh. uh, I did an extra three weeks. It was during the uh, hurricane that hit New Jersey in 2012. And uh, the person that was teaming with lived in, lived in uh, Columbus. And we were doing a route from Columbus to Jersey with relief supplies. They asked me if I'd go another three weeks uh, with that person. And I said, yeah, sure. So it lasted a little bit longer. But, you know, doing the relief efforts out there. But once he left, there was nobody again ever for – you know what that'd be eight seven and a half years mm -hmm. so when he hopped in i said strap in you know you may you may want to punch me in my face before too long i'm not used <laughs> to this <laughs> and it turned out it turned out great um he he's uh we're the same age we had a lot to talk about talked about the 80s and and all the great music and everything and and it we're, we came at it professionally on uh the interview we just did together he said with his wife, he's been living in a hotel room for six months. When he took over Dart, he bought a house just recently on Friday. His wife was up there and said, how did you guys not argue? Because he said right. him and his wife would have. We Not one argument. Wow. Yeah, I talk, yeah. I yeah because argue especially if you guys, anyway. still, you know, it's like you're bringing two completely different people in the cab of a truck, always, you know, out of nowhere. Who kept control of the radio? <laughs> yeah, you know, to be honest with you, um, we were, we were pretty professional. We didn't even touch the radio. We, we talked the whole five days. Um, and then oh. what happened was though, and we were very honest about this when I wasn't, you know, if I'm running down the road, there's not a lot for him to see. There just isn't. So he hopped in on Saturday and Sunday. We were all hands on, uh, you know, I backed it in. He, anything that I had to do with the trailer, he jumped out, disconnected, put the, you know, everything down, all the landing gear down. Oh. But, uh, come Monday, Come Monday, when I was literally, we were rolling all day on Monday. His day started on the phone and with emails and stuff like this because I'm just rolling straight down the road. There's nothing going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he's, he's pretty busy doing his job and a few things popped up. But uh, we were literally going to first on, on Monday. There was nothing for me except for holding on to the steering wheel and uh, driving. So I, get, I got to see how busy he was. That, mm -hmm. was, a, that was just as eye-opening. For me, as he was seeing what I had to go through at shippers and receivers and people cutting me off later on in the fourth and fifth day when we were getting in the cities. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it was no radio. Uh, did a lot of talking. I, I, I left him to himself. A lot of times he was on the phone, so he couldn't have the radio going. So, you know, it was five days. It was it was different, you know. I mean, it. but like I said, we were both professional and no, never had hard feelings towards each other. And, and mm -hmm. uh, I think because – we had so much in common in the eighties. We had, we had a ton to talk about it was down memory lane. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. That's really cool. So did he, um, did he walk away with any kind of revelations or anything that he had shared with you from, from the actual trip from the five days? Oh, absolutely. And I don't want to speak for him, but we've done quite, I think we did three interviews together. That's so uh, one of the biggest things is um, some of the struggles that I was having as a new person with Dart and uh, some of the things I didn't understand that would come through the Qualcomm. Uh, we picked up a uh, – uh, this was – look at – this is one I think I could tell and he had, had no problem with because this was a big deal to him. We we're He did two um, virtual town hall meetings, one in Atlanta and one in Dallas. We both have yards there. In Atlanta, the driver that dropped the trailer off met him. Now I was gone. I, I didn't stick around. And the, and the driver said, I left you a great trailer. It's loaded. It's ready. It's ready to go to Dallas and blah, blah, blah. So we woke up in the morning. I did my pre-trip and there were three things wrong with it. We had to get a new tire. We had to get a new light. And uh, there was uh, 
something else that there was something else I can't come to mind, but uh, oh, it was a dangling light for the uh, air control system mm-hmm. on the thing there, and they I had to take it into because I do have a perfect record. It's a big deal to me. I can't just take off on a trailer. If this mm-hmm. guy thought it was perfect, Mr. Abel saw well, the, it wasn't perfect. Right, that's a huge revelation for him. The struggles that we have when we do all these drop and hooks for someone who who cares about if I would have went through that level two with that trailer, I'd have gotten a ticket three eight three oh max work. Right. right. So that was a big revelation for him. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I saw that one too. And it is important for you know uh these drivers to do pre and post inspections on their equipment mm-hmm. before, you know, they uh leave or before they take, you know, ownership of it or responsibility of it. Mm-hmm. I wish they cared about their score as much as I care about mine. <laughs> I wouldn't be fixing all the trailers. And it does, that's been a sore spot of mine for eight years. And anybody, you know, what's funny is, is anybody would tell you that's been in this, um, that care, that don't, that, that has that clean record would tell you that is one of our biggest things is picking up stuff that's not right because people are just leaving with uh, no yearly inspection. Tires are bad. Um, one company I worked with that had three bad tires out of 18 and I sit there and had to wait and they were, they were bald. One was flat. The other one, two of them were bald. Oh man. So that was a few years ago, but yeah, it's always a struggle. Mm-hmm. Wow. All right. A uh, question there, Wayne. Are you, are you a foodie at heart? Are you, oh, are you? Because I saw the pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. I mean, you know, you got pretty excited there in the comments about the food and, and how, you know, small restaurants, you're, you know, you're excited about the small restaurants opening back up. And uh, so, yeah, are you a foodie at heart? And I mean, what are some of the best restaurants that you come across while your time on the road? Well, so I started eating better about three years ago. I gained 40, 50 pounds and uh, I wanted to quit eating. Uh, now, I will say, I will say if the truck stop has a restaurant, I can usually with Mr. Abel's, we ate at a TA. It's out there. We talked about it. Um, they had a, a grilled salmon with broccoli. I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. And it was real. That's the kind of stuff that I'll eat now instead of all the fried foods. So about two years ago, maybe it was three years ago, whenever I got my iPhone with the Google Maps, whenever I stopped, sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. Even in Canada, I Google restaurants. And if I can find one, my max is about two miles away, which I walked yesterday. I'll, I'll check it out. I'll give them a call, see what they got. And, and a lot of times these restaurants, it's not too expensive, but have you seen with the presentation of some of these foods? It's, I mean, I order something, I look at them, I'm gonna eat something good. If I'm gonna walk two miles somewhere, I make sure I can take a good picture of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> What's, what are some of the best places you've eaten at? And, and let me preface this with I am a huge foodie and I am pregnant and so food is like uh, my uh, thing uh, right now I could talk about food all day long <laughs> and Eric so, can to that <laughs> you know and I need I need to confess that one of the things that I didn't do I'd have to I'd have to go back for example um I posted a thing where it had three of the plates and I'm not very good at posting where where it was but one of the best places I ever ate was in uh, central Canada I was about halfway up and I pull into this town and uh, I still get, I don't know, by the way, but I'm going to backtrack just a little bit. I don't know if you know, but I got, I get better cell service. I'm with uh, my, my provider, at and I can, I, I can go into Mexico and go into Canada and not get charged. Right. Mm-hmm. It just can't be over 50%. Their towers are so much more powerful, way more powerful than the United States. I can get in the middle of Canada and have better service in some places around here in the United States. Uh-huh. It's amazing. People don't realize that it's, it's like 20 times more powerful than the, than the tower. So I pull into this town and I start Googling, you know, restaurants and I have service and things start popping up. But one thing I lack a lot of is putting the names down more like, you know, I'll see the food and, and, and post the food. And uh-huh. I totally like have to go back and I, I'd name the restaurant, but I can't remember. I can't remember. And I'm sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. But you said it's in central Canada. Well, the best one I ever had was in, in Central Canada um, and in uh, New Mexico. There was another place in New Mexico because I posted three shots the other day. Mm-hmm. And it was, one was New Mexico. One was in Central Canada. And I can't remember the other place um, that I had. The New Mexico one blew me away. It was just yeah. unbelievable. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I should get better at, at getting the names. But they're on yes. my original truck. Get better, Wayne. 
<laughs> they got names. Name. We need names. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The names the names are there, but you'd have to go to my old trucker Wayne page because they were years ago and I did do it then, but I didn't write it down to remember. All right. That's okay. We'll we'll have to check it out. We'll have to check it out. My parents have property in New Mexico, so if it's close by, maybe I'll go. <laughs> there you go. Just start just start Googling. Uh seriously on Google Maps restaurants and you get the stars. And those stars mean a lot. They're they're pretty on spot. So if you had a that one in New Mexico, I just remember it was like a four point nine. Oh, and I had to walk an hour, uh, an hour, not an hour and a half, a mile and a half to get there. And I passed up other restaurants to get to that place. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, I look at the stars and see how far I have to walk. <laughs> now, do you always eat out, or do you uh, ever like make your own food and bring it on the road with you? Um, you know, because you mentioned that you you started to eat a little bit more healthier. So is it just uh, basically a choice of food that you order from restaurants or do you ever make your own food and bring it on the road with you? Yeah, I don't always eat out. That'd be too expensive. Uh, This is one of the things I have to get used to with over the road because my easy dedicated automotive route that I talked to you about. So the place I picked up south of Columbus, there was a Kroger's right next door. So when they were loading me up, they knew, they knew. Wayne, they came out a first couple of times. I was there, I worked with them a year and a half. They weren't going to find me. I, I, I backed it in. They loaded it. I'm hauling over to the Kroger's to do what you just said and make my own food and do that kind of stuff. So, you know, when you have a Kroger's right there and I'm there um, twice a week, it makes it super easy, you know, yeah. to run over there. And the best, they had the best fruits I've ever had at this place. So there's a couple things that I'm missing that right now I'm not doing, but, you know, I haven't been on with Dart that long. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. I've seen a lot of um, videos where people are actually showing how they cook in mm. all when they're on the road. Now, is that something not that me. you know? <laughs> no, no, I'm not that elaborate yet. No, no. My, my uh, cousin has 32 years in, in the truck and uh, oh, wow. he does it. He does the uh, Dave Juhas is his name, the first cousin. And he uh, does the crock pot thing. And uh, they have these crock pots. Now I don't do it. But I guess that they, the lid shuts down and he'll drive, takes, what, 11 hours, I think, or whatever for a crock pot. Uh-huh. So when he's done, it's all done. And a lot of people are doing that. They're getting pretty that's, elaborate. Yeah. Yeah, that's really I've interesting. I've heard of the, the, uh, you know, the pot. I haven't heard about drivers doing that. That's you new. The crock pot? The crock pot. No, I have not heard about the crock pot. Oh, you're missing it, I guess. I mean, <laughs> I've heard about the frozen up. foods and, you know, just the, you know, the sack lunches from home, but the crock pot, no, that's new. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm, I quit uh, eating because I love them so much. The processed frozen foods, because they have microwave usually, I don't have it here yet, but uh, the processed foods were just as bad. That's a whole different issue, but salt and gaining weight with the processed foods. But he does it. He actually throws it in the crock pot, and they have specific for truck drivers now. And in the lid, it, it shuts and it has this rubber thing. So you know, when you're driving, it doesn't matter. It can tip over. Mm-hmm. It's not going to leak on you. Yeah, they're actually really cool, Aaron. You should check them out. They're like a little lunchbox thing, and yeah. it has it has like a like a tin, and it heats up. It's really cool. I almost want to yeah. get one, but I don't think I would actually use it. <laughs> Come on, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Now you mentioned that you mentioned that you walked a couple miles to get somewhere there, Dwayne. Do you do you walk? How, what's a what's now? Do you only walk on your hour workout times, or do you just walk in general whenever you have to pick up and get loaded, or deliver and get unloaded? Uh, do you use those times just to to get your walks in? Yeah, uh, shippers and receivers have gotten strange about people walking for liability reasons. So yeah. I do a lot of my walking on my 30-minute DOT mandatory workout, I call it there. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the break, uh, they worked out great when you're flatbed and you pull in the rest area. But after I get off of work, I make sure I, – I try to walk between two and four miles every day. Oh, wow. That's really good. That's really good. Yeah, that is really good. Now, you, you're doing all that with your uh... – your DOT regulation uh, steel toe boots, or you carry some? You oh, carry some- yeah, yeah, the steel toe <laughs> boots and everything. <laughs> I have some very nice running shoes for that stuff. That's, <laughs> that's too funny. I had a, I had a pair, and, and they just wore out. I'm going to buy another pair of AKU uh, hiking boots that were like 400 bucks. And uh, when I hiked in Alaska and all that stuff, and they just wore out. I could walk forever in them things. 
AKUs from Germany. Those are the ones to get, by the way. <laughs> awesome. Now, um, is there anything that you'd like to uh, share with uh, the other dr truck drivers out there as far as uh, staying healthy and, and keeping their mind right while being on the road? Yeah, um, especially during COVID here. I found that when I started to get more healthy, when I gained all that weight, I was more tired all the time. I wasn't eating healthy. Um, you know, I get a little bit more irritated easily. I, I think the biggest thing uh, staying healthy is you can uh, run longer without getting tired. Uh, also, you just have a better mindset. Um, it's been it's been crazy out here after um, you know during the COVID nineteen and now after because of drivers, it's it's ratcheted up. I mean, people are driving nuts right now, mm -hmm. and it can affect us mentally. But it, I, you know, if you stay in shape, if you walk, if if you exercise, I think that helps with all that stress throughout the day. I really do. It's helped me, and I know I've talked to a lot of people that have gotten healthy. Since I started this about three, I gave up sodas three years ago and started to talk a little bit more about staying healthy. And it, and it helps. It helps in the truck. It helps with uh, not getting so angry. If you are someone that prone to maybe get a little irritated out here, but when you're, but when you're exercising, when you're staying healthy, I think that helps overall, personally. What's, um, what's some advice you would give to the truck drivers who um, maybe aren't motivated to go out and walk? Maybe they just want to, you know, take a nap and not use that time to exercise and, and get their mind right. I, I don't think I'd be surprising anyone to say most of them uh, I do that. Most of them spend their 30 minutes. I, I, every day I walk and I see all these truck drivers and they're sitting in their truck. And they are taking their 30 minute break in their truck. Like, let's get this over with. This is going to change in September with the new hours of service. But, but uh, my, my thing is you got to motivate yourself. There's nobody out here that's going to motivate for you. I can talk to you during a video or other people, the motivational thing, but you actually have to feel like you want to get out of that truck. And mm -hmm. as hard as it is, it gets easier every day. Uh, you get more used to it. If you have a really long day, you get out. You'd be surprised after sitting in the truck if you had a long 13 hour day, you'd be surprised. Like, I don't want to do it. Once you get out there, you're like going, man, I needed that. Mm -hmm. I needed to get, I needed to get out of the space. I right. needed to right. exercise. It's good for your legs. Uh, truck drivers have a lot of problems with their legs because we sit in that position for so long. Motivate yourself. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and if you motivate yourself, then I think you can latch on to someone. I would say motivate yourself first and then find someone who you like and can listen to and you can share things off of. But if you're, in my opinion, and I've gotten slammed about this a little bit, but if you're hoping that Trucker Wayne is going to get you motivated to do it, it just doesn't work that way. I don't think. Right. But you are still inspiring people to get out of their truck and to go on walks and to get healthy, which is, which is really great. Yeah. The, the trucking industry does, does need advocates for that. Yeah. I think. I, I agree with you. I like the inspire better than motivate. Mm -hmm. inspire yeah. you and then, then you motivate yourself I like that wording better yeah yes yeah. yeah now do you have any uh any motivators there Wayne do you have uh you know channels yeah. that you listen to or you know websites you go to what are some motivators for you yeah lately lately it's truly been uh on, on LinkedIn when I hooked up on LinkedIn have you guys I know we've talked through LinkedIn and stuff like that but LinkedIn right now is probably my biggest motivator are, are listening to the brokers and the shippers mm -hmm. i have learned because you know the, the truckers went into the white house i'm not telling you guys anything you haven't been following no. but i have learned so much for brokers and shippers on linkedin that uh, right now that is my absolute motivation to tr try to figure out more about what's going on mm -hmm. outside of of my realm mm -hmm. and you start to realize uh firsthand that uh, there are there are good shippers. I always knew there were, but the brokers. I mean, I my feeling was that fight was brewing for a long time. COVID oh, yeah. just pushed it over the edge. Yep, it and, was boiling yeah. for a while. Yep, yep. and uh, you really now. I literally I'm watching shows about brokers. Talk. Now I don't agree with everything they say, by the way, but that doesn't matter. I'm learning from their mm -hmm. their you know their part. So not so much truckers now. Um, before you know six years. I had a, a guy, me and trucker Chad worked really close together and he's not doing it anymore. So I did have it in the past and we'd have this group. We called it the positive path to trucking success. It was a, it was a, it was a uh, closed group. It had like 300 and some people. 
they mm-hmm. all motivated. We had the same, we had that same vibe, you know, but right now it's all, it's all just really the brokers, shippers and receivers and, and uh, just watching uh, them and, and trying to understand, you know, their point of view during COVID when everything kind of fell apart. Yeah. Now, it's, I mean, it's okay. You can go ahead and share the name of who you listen to. <laughs> uh, who do you listen to? <laughs> oh, Chris Jolly. And Chris Jam, Jolly. Chris Jolly and Jammin. Okay. Do Jammin and a lot. They've been doing. They've been doing together. I didn't know if you wanted me to input that. Uh, oh I've yeah. Been watching. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Freight Waves uh, and What the Truck. Um, I've mm-hmm. been on there a few times. That's been awesome as well. well I listened to a uh, Cassandra Gaines on uh, Friday and Mad Gaines. Love her. Yeah. Fr- Friday, man. I mean, yes. I, I, I get to watch everyone have fun when I'm, I listen to it. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, she, she's awesome to, to watch. So, yes, yeah, th- thank you. I didn't know if you wanted me to plug them, but, but that, those are the ones that I'm really paying attention to right now. That's cool. Good. Hey, you know what? I before This is my favorite question to ask. Before we end, I want to ask you, what are some of the craziest stories or the craziest things you've seen on the road? Because Aaron shared a story about his dad and um, his dad had actually stopped his truck and um, it had ended up being like, uh, I don't know, Aaron, what, t- tell, the, tell the story really yeah. quick. So uh, <laughs> my dad, you know, my dad, I, I grew up in the trucking industry. My dad, you know, drove for a while, owned his own trucking companies. You know, I used to wake up in the middle of the night to my dad, you know, yelling at drivers or something like that. <laughs> they weren't yeah. at a location at a certain time. But, uh, you know, so... One story that really stuck out to me was that he was on the road and he was getting tired. So he pulled over on the side of the road um, because he was going to go ahead and take a nap uh, or get some sleep. So he goes into, you know, the, to his sleeper and he lays down and he's woken up by a banging, like a bang, bang, bang. (laughs) And as a distant banging, he could tell that it's coming from the, the, around the trail, the back of the trailer area. And so he gets up, he looks in his mirrors and doesn't see anything. And so he's like, that's weird. (laughs) So he goes back in his sleeper and lays back down, closes his eyes. He's not asleep yet because he's still thinking about it. Closes his eyes, hears bang, bang, bang again. He gets up, what the hell? You know, looking at both his mirrors. (laughs) He opens opens the door, kind of looks behind to see if there's anything, you know, behind the rear axles, doesn't see anything. And so he sits in his seat for a while and he's watching the mirrors to see if he sees anyone running around the trailer and doesn't see anything. So after about 30 minutes or so, he goes back into the the sleeper and lays down, closing his eyes again. He's not asleep because he's still thinking about it. Bang, bang, bang. This time it's on the sleeper door. Okay. And so he hops up out of the sleeper, opens the door, grabs his tire thumper, and starts walking around and he's shouting, who, you know, who's there, this and that. And no one, no one is there. No one's around the truck. He's looking around, doesn't see anyone off in the distance. He gets into his truck, puts it in a gear and just drives through the next truck, next truck stop. Founds, finds out later that he was parked on some Indian reservation land. Oh, now that, yeah. oh boy. Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything. That's a okay. That I can't beat that. I can't beat it's that. It. Just share share one of your crazy stories. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I'll give you two. I'll give you two of them, but it cannot compete with that. That's pretty. That's pretty crazy. Oh, oh yeah. Not crazy, but I don't know if that's that's not the right word. But uh, no, I uh, I uh, one time we were at it. I was at a TA, and me and like three other guys were just doing our break, and a guy hops out of his truck uh, next to to the uh. uh to the uh, maintenance place and he just hops out and his truck starts to roll and he literally leaves it and starts to walk away, not paying any attention to what was going on. And that truck kept going and smashed into two TA trucks. Just, I mean, it was going fast. And then he heard the crunch and he looked behind him. It's his truck. And he's like going, uh, it smashed the hell out of two of the TA trucks. Oh my God. uh, Yeah. Yeah. He got in a little bit of, that was a big deal. And, uh, um, Another one was probably not good. I probably shouldn't be telling this story, but uh, I had 100% on all my two years at General Motors. And I was going into Kansas City, and there was an ice storm. And I wasn't that far away, maybe 18 miles away. I had a couple hours left, and this ice storm was pretty bad. And, and I'm going really slow, 
and uh, trucks are just going, literally going into the ditch. Uh, two winters ago, they had 18, not this last winter, but the winter before that. Anybody who was in Kansas City, they tell you they had 18 winter storms and a couple of them were ice storms. And I kept rolling, kind of dumbly kept rolling, but I, I was safe. I was going slow because all the other trucks and cars were going down the ditches and just going everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, me and like two other trucks were not close together, but just going super slow. I made it on time with like a minute to spare, but uh. it was just like littered with debris. Um, uh -huh. I shouldn't. I've told that story one other time before, but that's kind of stupid that I kept doing that. But that's just a dumb story that I should have stopped. But I made it. I made it safe. I just slowed it down. Yeah, I mean, but that's but that's the reality of things, you know. When when there are storms like that, you know, being as safe as possible yourself and then other people around you too, especially being in such a large truck, um, you can. Well, you're right. I didn't mean to cut you off either, no, but with, okay. the, with the flatbed, we were chain and go. So mm -hmm. if the road wasn't, wasn't closed, they expected you to chain and go. And everybody mm -hmm. knew that when you got hired. So my mentality through this whole thing, I'm not saying I'm super trucker either. It's just, okay, chain and go. Now I didn't have chains, but I, I, I just felt like if I went, there were two other truckers that I didn't do nothing special. I want to make sure people say, oh, it's super trucker way. No, two other truckers, you know, we kept our, we kept the middle lane and went real slow. I went around the beltway and delivered to the uh, Kansas city, Kansas place. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, yeah, I mean, you need to think about your safety first. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. Well, before we end, um, do you have any advice outside of um, health and wellness for any of the truckers that might be listening? Yes. Please quit getting so mad. Seriously. <laughs> um, Seriously. Keep it yeah. positive out there. Look out for one another, right? Yeah, that's, that's kind of went out. Now, I will say that's kind of went out the window, and the old timers would say that used to be there. That's, that's I, you know, I've been in long enough where you just, everyone needs to take a kind of a chill pill. There's too many people wound tight out here. And, uh, you know, the more wound tight you get, the harder you're going to drive. And it's the COVID-19 is just ratcheted up with drivers and truckers. Mm -hmm. It seems to me, I'm not in their head. But it seems to me they're trying to make up some kind of money they lost if they didn't run through it. And you're never going to make up any lost money. Everyone needs to slow down, relax, and uh, with, especially when there's not as many police. Now, the police have started to come out, if you didn't know. The last two weeks, I've seen more trucks pulled over in a long time. But uh, I think everyone just needs to really seriously relax. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good advice. I, I would agree with that. <laughs> ah, good deal. <laughs> well thank you so much we really appreciate it um and we hope to have you back on the show here soon and hear more Thanks. crazy stories <laughs> yeah. that was no he aaron had the story aaron had the story. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah. i'm a sucker i'm a sucker for ghost stories anyway so i like that one that's awesome and i can't <laughs> thank you enough uh, aaron and ashley for for having me on here and and I, I really appreciate it and, uh, and to all the truckers that do follow me, um, on a last note, though, I do rub. At my eight years, I do rub some truckers the wrong way. I know this, but, you know, if you listen to my message and if you don't get mad at the message, a lot of times I'm right. A lot of times I'm wrong. It's, it's an, a, more of an opinion thing that I do now. Right. And if I'm wrong, I mentioned something about CB radios one time. And I was on a debate with my old page and I was proven wrong about CB radios. And I admitted. I admitted that I don't just because I don't like CB radios doesn't mean that they it doesn't come with a mm -hmm. bunch of good things that happen right. on the CB radio. So if, if you're out there and, and you say, oh, it's that trucker Wayne again. But if you listen to the message and don't get so upset and know that a lot of times it is opinion mm -hmm. and uh, I can be wrong. I, I like to say I would like to think I'm more right in some of these. But, you know, I mean, when you're throwing opinions out like I do, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. Sometimes you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Well, thank you so much for taking time today and um, yeah. for all the work that you've done, you know, being in the military as well as continuing to drive during COVID and um, everything that's happening in the world right now. We thank you so much. Um, you're keeping our, you're keeping our country going and we appreciate that and keeping our stores stocked with toilet paper, right? <laughs> you got that right. I've done enough of them lately. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, and uh, everybody, check out our check out our podcast, our previous podcast, uh, "This Truck in Life," 
And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share our videos. And thank you again, Wayne. Have a great day. Right. Nice to meet Jared and Ashley. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Have a good Bye. one. Bye.